Welcome to this video. In this video, I would like to show and explain to you how you can raise and start an event of a workflow of an SAP business workflow or of an flexible workflow. And um, here right now we can see basically the flexible workflow that is using the um, start event and the leading object and if we have a close look then we can see that this class is being used basically within here we have two activities to create um, an html table of the purchase order line items and a one-step approval if you would like to get to know more information how i have set this up how i have created this i have um, already published some videos about these steps so i will link the videos that you can have a look on those settings on those steps in more closely but right now here one step to basically create and to start an event is within the transaction code s w u e and once you've opened this up, then basically you have to specify your uh, your class, your event. You can specify your event parameters, and then you, if you have one key attribute, you can also specify an object key. But then just click on create a event, and then you're good to go. Then you have created your event, you raised your event, you have created your workflow. But in most cases the workflow will be started based on a user action, based on one condition and will be started in ABAP. And therefore I would like to show you this um, and we can do this within an ABAP report, ABAP program. So we open up the SE38 transaction and here basically I will create one sample program um, based on one already existing program to explain, to show you every single ABAP statement and step that you need to do. Of course, you can always reuse the coding I will show you in the SE37, so in the function builder and um, within a function module. And you can also do this within an ABAP class, so within a transaction code SE24. But basically, yeah, here just going to create and then just name it call workflow, for example, executable program. Then let's click on save, sign it to my dollar TMP package as a local object. Okay, great. So then um, a couple of steps are needed. So first of all, um, we have to define or to use a variable for our constant for the object type in this case our leading object our class then the event that will be started based on this class then we um, we need an object key currently i don't have a key attribute an object uh, key so i will just transfer an empty value then in our case the approver so the user id our header information of the purchase order our line item information of the purchase order and our event container basically storing all the event parameters and basically um, raising uh, over events so this is important by the way it's really important that um, you really get to know within your leading object within your event your event parameters so those three are really important you have to make sure not to make a typo i will explain you in a couple of seconds so this is important to get to know so then what we have to do is basically now we are uh, setting the event parameters and therefore we have to get our instance um, our container um, instance that is raising the event later on that is storing all the event parameters so this is the first step this is important to basically set the event parameters that what we're going to do is then we are setting the first event parameter so basically by default this sap user starting with us and then as mentioned don't make any typo um 
So here to use this event parameter. So transferring or setting the first event parameter. Then in my case, I would like to set the purchase header information and the purchase line item information. And therefore I'm selecting data of the table uh, echo storing it into my work area based on uh, the first purchase order that has been created by this SAP user. And if there is an entry, then uh, I will do this. So basically I will um, store the information to my event parameter. And then next, what I'm going to do is if there is, because then I'm in the if uh, condition, if there is one purchase order, then I will select all the purchase or the line item information from the table ECPO, storing it into my internal table. And if there is at least one entry, then I will store those information to the event parameter. Okay, now we have stored all of our uh, event parameters. Now the most important part is here. So basically raising the event itself. And therefore I am calling the raise method of this class CLSWF EVT event transferring the CL for class, the class itself, the event, the object key as mentioned, in this case it's empty, and the instance of my uh, event parameters. And yeah, this is uh, important. What is also really important is at the end, don't miss to do a commit work because other than that, your event won't be raised. So make sure that at the end, your commit work is there. So then pretty printer shift F1, control F2 doing a syntax check and control F3 to activate our um, report program. Then I have opened up the SWIA transaction. So to process work items of administrator to basically show you um, what is happening. So basically if I execute this, then we can see right now, no workflow has been started based on my selection criteria. And if I now um, execute this report um, with this button or F8 key on your keyboard, then we can see now this has been started. And if we also go into the my inbox, making a little refresh, then here we can also see our work item. Okay, coming back here to the program. Um, once again, I think it's important, first of all, to get the event container and then within here to raise the event itself. Yeah, it's easy as it is. Um, if you have any questions left, please put them in the comment section. Please like this video and please subscribe to not miss great upcoming videos. Thank you so much and see you in the next video.